Okay, so we're going to uh, move right into the meeting and we're going to start with uh, possible superintendent discipline. So I'm going to start out by saying that um, we're all here tonight because we know that um, we have an issue and that we are going to discuss it tonight and we are going to um, try to put it to rest tonight. Um, Again, any comments that anybody would like to make during the discussion portion of the meeting, uh, again, I ask you to come to the podium, speak into the microphone, state your name. Um, we will then uh, have our, our, well, as we motion before there's any discussion, and then we will uh, call for discussion, and then we'll go from there. Uh, again, I need people to be civil and respectful, and um, we really need to stay on topic and not try to throw in the kitchen sink. So, all right. So, I guess we're going to start by talking about the reason we're here is the, um, is the plagiarism item in the Florence uh, newspaper. You can't hear me? No? Gary? <laughs> Can we turn it up a little bit? Thank you. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. I'll try to hold it back so we're not feeling too bad. Um, so I've got items of plagiarism in the stop and view newspaper. Uh, we know that this has occurred. We know that there's more than one incident. So we are not going to uh, nitpick through every article that everybody may have found in the, uh, in, on the internet. We are going to concede the point that it's happened and it's there. Um, so, with that said, we are going to uh, start with um, a motion from Mr. Finley, I believe. Okay. I got this. All right, I want to make a motion to initiate a termination of the dialogue hearing in regards to our superintendent, John D. I'll second. All right, so now we're at the discussion, and did everybody hear the motion? No. Okay, the motion is to initiate a termination hearing for Mr. McGee. And Mr. Finley's made that motion, and Mr. Greger has seconded the motion. So now we're at discussion. So I'm going to start with uh, those of us here at the table, and then we will have it open for other, co other folks. So this is Corey. How about we start it? Okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? <clears throat> uh, in consideration of what we're meeting with tonight, I, of course, was disappointed uh, with, with what has happened with Mr. McGee, but in the seven and a half years that I've worked with Mr. McGee, I have felt nothing but uh, admiration for his ability as a superintendent. Um, I have five of my own children, and one of the things that's a rule in our house is that we talk about having a savings account when we deal with one another. And I always tell my kids that you better make sure there's enough money or enough good things in your savings account that when you have to make a withdrawal from there, that it's not going to bankrupt you. And I don't know if you understand my point, but my point is that in the seven and a half years that I've worked with Mr. McGee, he has more than still the savings account for me. And as I was thinking about some of the things that he has accomplished for us, initiated for us as a board to be a better board, um, I wrote some of these things down and I hope that you will bear with me because it's a fairly long list of things that he has accomplished or helped us, helped us accomplish while he has been the superintendent here in Florida. I'm going to start with school finance. When he came on reserve, and for those of you that, don't know, that might not be aware of this, the state would lie for every 
public school to have 10% of its general fund in reserve. So that if something happens uh, somewhere along the line, that you have a savings account basically to cover that. And when this interview came, we had about 5% five, five of our general budget was in reserve. And that has been raised to about almost 90% now in the last seven and a half years that we've been here. When he came, our accounting software that we had was fairly old and out of date, and he initiated a, a new software program for us for, to take over. He's also done that with uh, the accounting system for our student activities. Um, he's, he has initiated and worked in conjunction with a number of grants that have brought more than, well, I wouldn't say more than, almost a million dollars into our school district. Um, he's worked with Mr. DeVrito on a safe route for school grant, and that's what you see that's been responsible for the sidewalk and, you know, to the park, the safety of our students. Um, and that grant was over $200,000. Um, there's a Valentine's grant, and that's a grant to soccer here in the Valley, and that's about $25,000 $25, yearly. That's, that's coming to our school district. Um, we have a quality school grant. Um, I'm not sure of the money on that. I couldn't remember what that was. Then we had a Quick Start Energy Project uh, grant. This was several years ago. And Florence obtained one of the highest um, payouts in that grant. We, we received $430,000 to update um, the, the infrastructure of our energy within our school. Um, he is also, you know, in many schools they have to hire uh, a negotiator when it comes time to deal with our um, certified and, and classified staff. And he, um, because of his experience and expertise, has been able to negotiate with two members from the board, with our staff, saving us um, thousands of dollars because when you have to hire an independent negotiator to come in, you're looking at probably a minimum of $5,000. I'm going to move on to the school program. He has been very involved in updating and, and, and keeping our curriculum in, in, in case with, um, with other schools and with the nation and with the nation. We've added AP classes. He's been a component of as small a classes as, as we can um, have in our middle school, especially classes in the elementary. Um, he has just implemented the, um, the, the Alex program for math. And there's been quite a bit of discussion about that at, current, at, at recent meetings. He's also implemented the last year program for reading. Um, he continues to, to support the improvement on all curriculum levels and he was very involved in, uh, in finding the money to upgrade the books in our library. <laughs> um, school maintenance. He, um, several years ago, we changed our, our custodial program. We had privately contracted with another um, agency, and they, when when they came back with their with their um, contract to us, they had raised that considerably, so Mr. McGee suggested that we go back to hiring our own private custodial staff and has been involved in doing that and keeping on top of that. We have new lockers, we have new bleachers here in the old gym, um, we've uh, installed a, a brand new ADA compliant ramp for any, any special needs that's in the back of our building, and if, if any of you have not seen that, you need to. We should have had a before and after picture because it's, it's just really incredible. That will come through a grant also, and that was over $200,000. Um, we've replaced the football scoreboard, new lights installed in the gym, new sound system in the gym. And we've, it's a continual upgrade of our sewer system. I'm sure you're all aware of pretty much that that's a continual upgrade. And then we had, and then we had an upgrade of our drinking, of our drinking water system that uh, was implemented a couple of years ago, I think. Um, facility improvement. Uh, and these are things I think that when somebody drives by the school, they're not going to see or, or, or appreciate unless 
you, um, you know, have had somebody tell you. I mean, every year, um, because of its budgeting ability, we are able to put in some rooms carpet, paint, um, we remodeled the elementary bathrooms, there have been new tables in the pavilion, we've had to replace the hot water heater in our kitchen and our locker room, we've got a new roof on our building, we've had a, we have a new storage for, of um, sheds or equipment, we've got sprinkling systems, um, let's see. New lunch table. We have to have to install a new fire alarm system. That was several years ago. That was one of the first things that he was, that he had to initiate. New sidewalks, and then we've got pay parking lots that we've never had before. Um, our staff concerns. I mean, he has tried to work very hard in our budget to keep uh, to keep the teachers that we have here. Um, he's we've replaced. He's helped us replace surveillance cameras. Implemented um, the ability to, to when, you, when you're calling every morning for substitutes, we have a new program that is an automatic tolling system. He's done the same thing with the, with the school reach notification pro program, which I think parents have very much appreciated. Um, we have phones installed in the gym now for safety reasons. Um, we have white cards, a white card system for our staff. Um, he's helped us replace outdated equipment. Um, we have new fencing around the school that was a safety issue and, and our softball field. Technology improvements. Almost every teacher in our system has a Promethean board. And for those of you that might not understand what that is, it's, um, it's a great big iPad is really what it is. I guess that's the best way for somebody who's not very technical to explain that. Which has been a great, a great um, thing for our teachers. He's, he's, he's initiated by new computers every three years. He has totally upgraded our computer system, our network, our wireless network, installed fiber optics, and installed a DVR system into our new gym. Um, those are just some of the things I think that people might not be aware of that have happened within our school district in the last seven and a half years. I've lived in this school district for 40 years, and I can tell you we've had more upgrades on our old building in the last seven and a half years than we have had previously in the last 20. I mean, since we actually remodeled, which was 20 years ago, because we just paid off our, our last, or, or the bond on the map. Um, the other thing I'm really proud of that, that I think comes, you know, comes from good leadership in our, in our district is that Last year we found out that we have the highest extracurricular GPA of all class two schools. Um, we have the lowest dropout rate for all schools in the Valley County. Um, the technology has improved so much that we're one of the schools that people look to for our network. Um, we've made such improvements in student safety with the crosswalks and parking lots and in, in the last eight years, we've been able to surpass three general elections, general fund elections, levies, non elections, general fund levies that have helped finance our district. Um, because of those things, I, I am in support of Mr. McGee, and I know that he has, as we all have, looked at a, a, a mistake that was made and um, we're going to make corrections for that, and there will be some discipline that's going to fall tonight, but I am still in support to Mr. McGee for our season time. Thank you, Ms. Portia. Mrs. Rose is next, please. I don't have a secure statement, but I do want you to know that I believe the job is here. I believe John is a very character man and he's a, a man of honor and a man of love. And I believe this to be a lapse of judgment or a stupid mistake, if you want to call that. But I worked with the district for 25 years and my job was a newsletter. And the newsletter, when I first started about 
it all has to be approved by the superintendent. Everything was read to the library before printing and sent out. And as time went by, and I gained the trust of the superintendent, it got to a point that he didn't see it until it came back from the printer. But I knew about the copyright stuff. I walked short. I hope I never made a mistake about something we want. In this case, because of my experience in working here, I would say a lot of that is a clerical error. But it's a job mistake to use uh, error ultimately because he should have caused and that so it kind of a double mistake. It was I think when the newsletter was put together, the stuff was put in it, it was ready to go. And he trusted that it was all right. So usually the superintendency that comes back, they trust that their staff have put it in right. And errors do happen. But I I stand behind John because I know him well. I believe that he's honorable man in the From a family, an honorable family of I am He's uh, he's a member of our community. He wants to live here and be a part of it. And I agree there has to be some discipline. But I think with what we do here do here tonight and what he's already gone through, I think that he's paid the price for it. And I think you have to understand that everybody does make mistakes. It's just a lot of us, when we make a mistake, it's not out in front of the public. And we've all done, done dumb things, but we just don't get caught. And a lot of that is, it's not the people that are doing it, it's just the ones that get caught in a bunch of years. And when you're a public figure, when you're a superintendent of education, you're in charge, then you, you are a higher standard. And so if you make a mistake, it's a lot more serious. But I, I do support John. I, I'm not go, going through this with my eyes shut. I know the air, and I still go with John. I think with the discipline that we put on this meeting tonight, I think he's paid enough. Sorry, thank you, Mrs. Brown. Mr. Kelly, I'd like would you like to go now? Sure. Well, I'm sorry to say, but it doesn't happen to John. Yeah, it's, it's an absolutely terrible thing that's very easy to avoid. And it does, uh, what it does, unless we hold, hold it accountable, it will lower our standards, I think. There should be, we need to maintain our standards here at this school. There should be some consequences of this kind of stuff. Pretty serious consequences. I might be a little, a little hard line, but, uh, that's just the way I feel. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you, Mr. Shane. Mr. Berger? Okay, thank you. Um, I'm, you know, I'm talking to the board and, and the audience here, and um, I do not support termination, and uh, here's my reasons why. Um, I'm glad that you had that long list because that. Uh, Means I don't have to speak as long. But um, the one thing I'd like to the board to consider is we've done evaluations, uh, annual evaluations, and we look at what I consider to be essential functions of the job of the superintendent. And on most of the evaluation categories, um, Mr. McGee has uh, rated as, as being fairly high. Uh, I'm probably one of the harshest on those evaluations, I think. The scores I get may, may be lower than, than what the average usually is. I probably drag the average down because I am fairly critical. But um, that being said, the um, the ratings have been high, 
Um, and, and they're high because of reasons uh, that Vicki and Dorothy have, have talked about. Uh, you know, the, the school funding, the improvements. Um, uh, each, each year, the school continues to get uh, uh, the, the structure of the facility gets better. Um, the, you, know, you can see it in the parking lot, you can see it in the ramp. Um, that doesn't happen by accident. That's, that's from good management uh, of, our, of our general fund. Um, also, we've had financial audits that have, have been very good. There's been minor issues with those audits, and we get them taken care of uh, fairly quickly. And so that's something else I appreciate. I, I feel like, um, well, another thing, too, is that I want to mention is, um, you know, there's future improvements. There's a, we've had academic improvements throughout the years as well, since, you know, especially if, you know, I pay attention now when I'm on the board and I've had kids at school. Um, as well as I, I do know future improvements that are currently being worked on, and I, I think are, are very important to keep going. Um, now, I think plagiarism, this plagiarism uh, in, incident um, has definitely overshadowed the, uh, the excellent results uh, and does definitely deserve uh, discipline, but I don't believe it deserves termination. Um, I, I don't think plagiarism like this falls in the same category as a termination category. And when I'm, when I'm thinking of termination, I'm thinking of uh, more serious offenses like breaking the law, you know, having DUIs, uh, fraud, stealing, you know, inappropriate relations. We see that all the time around the country, and, and a lot of times that, that ends up being passed over. I think this is, this is taken much more um, seriously than, than those things, although I think those are termination categories. So, um, and, and the other thing that's coming out of this, I know it's extremely hard for John. It's extremely hard for I think the whole district. Um, but I believe the students are also seeing firsthand um, the consequences of one's actions. Um, I guarantee you know before this whole thing, and I'm I'm not making this an excuse for doing it. That not is the reason why. But students are seeing the consequences that John has had to go through with his family. Um, and, and so I, I think there is there is a, an unexpected positive that comes out of this, um, and, and I don't believe you know with discipline. I don't believe termination is necessary, and that's what I'm trying to try to convince the board. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm going to ask you to stand up, and I'm going to ask you to stand up, and I'm going to ask you to stand up, and I'm going to ask you to stand up, and I'm going to ask you to stand up, and I'm going to ask you to stand up, and I'm going to ask you to stand up, and I'm going to ask you to stand up, and I'm going to ask you to stand up, and I'm going to ask you to stand up, and I'm going to ask you to stand up, and I'm going to ask you to stand up, and I'm going to ask you to stand up, and I'm going to ask you to stand up, and I'm going to ask you to stand up, and I'm going to ask you to Hi, my name is Lena Nichols, and I've been in this in the district uh, this time for 12 years. Um, and I agree all the things that he's done, but I also agree he's getting paid to do this. If he didn't get a paycheck, this all this stuff wouldn't have been done. Or our citizens here didn't vote for the tax eleven. We wouldn't have a lot of the money that's there. Termination? Yes, yeah, a hard thing to do. But I really believe the office point termination is going to be for the best. I guess I'm from the old school. Oh, I'm sorry. Please, please say your name again. I am a state McCracken. I've lived in the Clark area for about 35 years. I've got six grandchildren graduated from school with, with good education. Can you speak a little closer to the mic, please? I have my six grandchildren have six of my grandchildren have gone through the school and they've all received just good education. They've all gone out of college and now pursuing their careers and whatever whatever they chose to do. You know, I I don't need to get involved in school politics. I'm one of the silent silent majority that spreads this bad and these that up to the people that we that we go in to do that. Uh, <laughs> I recently had a nice experience at a church from the same basketball time of views. The first thing I noticed was that our soul was one of the only two that had 
Both girls came and boys too that had qualified for state. Both of them represented very well. Our band had uh, Jordan Wagner was excellent as we were true. And I realized that that came from training, good training, and coaching for the school. I was really proud that I could say what was for. I also know that our children were very courteous, considered brothers, and were excellent. Uh, you know, they, that they really had good sportsmanship. When I see a bunch of younger, especially teenagers who act this way, I immediately talk about to them leadership. That leadership comes from the teachers, the advisors, the coaches, and the administrators all the way up to the top. And I can say that you should be proud of the young people who are turning out of this school. They are proud young people. You know, even the best of us occasionally make a mistake. I'd like to say that I never made one, but that does not be true. If there's anyone here who has, if I, if I have made a mistake and I have made any, it was not an intentional mistake. If there's anyone in this group who has never made a mistake, I really admire you. It must be very difficult to be perfect. But occasionally, like this happens, I often think of her to the Bible. There seemed, it seems that there was a very angry group that had gathered and they made their attention to us and so that that woman to death because of the mistakes that she had made. That was when Jesus stepped up and said, and I'm paraphrasing this, let he who is without sin cast a first stone. I'll let you know the dead silence of that crowd as each one looked at the other to see who was going to admit that they had never made a mistake. The crowd dissipated, not like a stone was thrown. Your reference to that is St. James' version of the Bible, John chapter 8, verse 7. There are so many problems in the world today that it seems to me that we can better use our time and energy pursuing the things that really are affecting us, that really need to be taken care of. Let's not make an offer of the whole deal. If we set ourselves up to judge a man, then we should first know all the good that he has done for the school and for the community. And um, then we should on the other side now about the mistakes that he made that he had been in his own for. All I have to say is if it gets a problem, don't try to fix it. Thank you very much. Good evening. My name is David McCann. I live upon Cooney Ridge, Florence. I have four children who two have gone through the school previously, D E C A N Catholic uh, School. My two sons are now at the University of Montana, the biology students, and they're doing well. I'm thankful to God for that. And I have two additional students here at the school. I have a middle schooler and I have a high school. And I'm also thankful that they are doing extremely well um, at uh, Florence. And the reason we came to Florence originally many years ago was because of the reputation of the school. And we believe that that will continue under the current superintendent's tenure here. I guess I have a couple of questions uh, that I want to ask the board. Um, first of all, has, has Mr. McGee apologized and taking responsibility for his discrepancy. Uh, and the board uh, has disciplined him in the past for those discrepancies. Is that not true? 
they have discipline, they have levied out some disciplines for Mr. McGee to accomplish. Has Mr. McGee accomplished those disciplines? Has he not spoken to 250 high school students and English classes stood before 16, 17, and 18 year olds and told them what he did and why he was wrong? Has he not done that? I have my understanding that he has. My daughters were part of that. Um, has Mr. McGee written a letter to the person um, that he took the article from that was in the most recent, uh, telling him of his discretion and um, asking his forgiveness for that discretion? It seems to me when you look at the actions of the board as it relates to Mr. McGee and his leadership, that John McGee has attempted to do all that was asked of him in his discretion. I don't know that there's any more that you can ask of a man except that he be submitted to the authority that God and our country has put before him. We are all called to submit to authority. There's always somebody higher. And it seems to me, in my looking and examining this case, that Mr. McGee has attempted to right the wrong that he did. It doesn't make the wrong right, but he's attempted to make it right. And so, when we sit around our table, our dinner table, and I, the two boys, and, and they're in their own home. They never come home anymore. It's terrible. 20 minutes away. But when the girls are home, and we talk about it, and we talk about it, they don't, they don't come forward and question um, what they're going to do in the future as it relates to this. Is what comes out at our, up at our table is that there was a man who made a, an egregious error a mistake, but was man enough to stand up and bear up under it. And for them, that sets an example for them, an example that I want them to exude in their life, which is one of taking responsibility for your actions, but then going forward to make them right and to make sure you don't fall into that same error again. I am, while I'm, I, I, feel terrible for what John has gone through. He brought it on himself. We all know that he brought it on himself. He just, I just don't think he was thinking. When I did some research on um, web plagiarism just the other night, one of the things that I found was that there is an understanding, an incorrect understanding in, in our communities that to take and borrow things from the internet is okay. That that's something that's somewhat acceptable. In reality, when you look at Kate Turabian's book on how to write research and thesis and dissertations, one of the things you find is that it's not acceptable and that we must give credit for everything. But there is this pervasive understanding that you can do this, and it's wrong. And I think we found out here that it is wrong, and the example has been set for our children for the future that that is wrong and that they can't do that. And so I'm, I will close with this. I, I would encourage the board to encourage Mr. McGee, if he survives this, and I hope he does, to continue to write for the top of you. Mr. McGee is not a great writer. I don't think we hired him for his writing ability. I think we hired him and he has proven out his administrative and his management ability, his operations leadership, and how he's led the school. And it is for those reasons that I think he needs to be maintained in this position because I am concerned with who's going to come and replace Mr. McGee. I mean, let's, let's be real. We're Florence. And we don't have the ability to draw some of the big names like Missoula. Whether we even want those names here, I don't know. One of the great things about John McGee is he lives in the community. He's part of us. And I don't think we do this to people who are a part of our community. I think we, we expect good from them. But when they fail and they're, take, they're willing to take responsibility, we gather around them and we support them and encourage them. And so I close with that and just to say that let him who was out was without sin cast the first stone. We are all men and women who falter and fail. And we will continue. And I hope that grace will be given to me when I fail. The same amount of grace will be given to Mr. McGee. Grace, unmerited favor, 
what you don't deserve, but you're given out of love. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Jim Street. I served on this board from 2007 2010. Some of the problems that we were playing for when I served on the board with a few other members still continue for here, haven't been taken care of. And uh, I respect these people's position. I do. It's a very hard position. Nobody agrees with you all the time. We have to make the right decision as a board member. Um, I have a lot of respect for Mel Finley this evening. Um, to come up forward, be bold and personally responsible, I feel, for, the, for what he committed. It should be. It's, it's not looking up in the dictionary. It's sex, people. It's sex. Okay? Our superintendent committed sex. Okay, look it up in the dictionary. What are we going to do to a student at our school when we get him steal money in the locker room and he said, I'm sorry? We just can't slap his hand and say, we'll apologize when we get the money from and let him continue? It's all right. Excuse me. You need to speak to us. You need to speak to us. Okay, one thing to everybody, ma'am. Okay? And also, uh, I'd like to address Dixie's comment of all the things that have been done. The people that deserve the credit for what she brought up, more than anybody, for the community members, the people that made it back to this community. This is a business that's run here in Florence at the school. It's not a good place to love. I'll tell you, if I had an employee, I own local business that stole from me, there wouldn't be two seconds before he'd be fired. So I want the board to think about that, what actually happened. And we, we deserve better respect for that with the money that we're giving to the school and all the real love that have come since it's been here for seven years. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi. My name is Eric Gold Sheldon. Uh, my wife and I moved here in 1988. <coughs> And uh, this will be our 16th year having kids go through this school. And so, thank God we're going to be empty nesters next year. We're looking forward to that. Um, I first met John, uh, we were doing pub stops together. Met him down at the Chief Looking Glass uh, campground. And I was in a, kind of a chair of the Cub Scouts at the time. And we were having issues with the gym. Uh, uh, gym time because there's so many activities going on here. Uh, within the week, he had our issues solved, and I thought, boy, this guy is a different kind of guy. He's actually getting something done. When you have guys that can do that for you, when you have doers that, that accomplish tasks, that can build the, the kind of building, build the kind of futures for these kids that we need, those are the kind of people you will hang on to. So, really, I want to just, uh, you know, tell you that Vicky Bliss uh, was tremendous. Yeah. We've all seen, I've been here for 16 years. I've seen the improvements. I've seen the score improvement. I've seen the technology. It's real. And it's been fantastic. My daughter graduated from here as a senior three and a half years ago. She took so many AP classes. She graduated from the University of Montana in three and a half years. So somewhere, somehow, that took the leadership to get those extra AP classes in. And so, I guess I, I, I don't come to these board meetings very often, but, um, you know, I really would like the board to get back to focusing on academics instead of politics. Um, we just had a beautiful prom this last week. The basketball team is very, very well. Where is the, the positives in the talk here? I'd like to see that instead of some of the negative in the paper. This school has a lot to offer. When you take a look at the body of leadership of John McGee, it's 99 And So if you're going to sit back and judge somebody, you better take a look at all the good things that he's done, as well as maybe the issues. And so every market is it. And so look in your own house before you take, it, take up that judgment. And so again, thank you, John, for all you've done. And, and Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, baseball, softball, all the things we've done together over the years. It's been fantastic. So, thank you. My name is Kevin O'Brien. I was a staff trustee from 2006 
2009. And I can't say that there was a lot of positives that went on in that time with me as a trustee or with the business of the district. And tonight I'd like to talk about the business of the district. Uh, Chairperson Appleby, was there a meeting on January 23rd where the board addressed uh, an act of play review by the superintendent? Uh, we're going to do a question and answer here. Well, we're talking about actually there was already something that went on in a closed session. On the 23rd, we handled Mr. Fiki's personnel review. Okay, uh, and, and we are not going to discuss back and forth what, what okay. happened. Okay. okay, statements in that statement that came out of that meeting in the Revell Republic stated that the board did it. Require Mr. McGee to write an apology to Mr. Robert Bosa. Also, that the board wanted Mr. McGee to talk to the students to apologize for the actions. Policy number 1400 in your school policy manual. Very last sentence, policy 1400. No formal action shall take place during executive session. The board wrote that policy. Also, policy 1400. This meeting was asked for over a month ago. In policy 1400, the chair has the right as an individual to call for a special meeting without a meeting being held. The chair has the right to ask for that. Also, two other board members also have the right to ask for that. It doesn't take a board meeting to call a special meeting. There's a list of 12 policies that were broken with the act of plagiarism and the action that follows by the board. I'm only going to read one. Policy 6110. Policy 6110 is superintendent qualification. And I'm just going to read one line in that. Sorry about the delay, folks. Qualifications and appointment for the superintendent. Superintendent must be a good character and an unquestionable moral and integrity. He has failed that in your policy manual. And if you're not going to follow the policy manual, please don't expect your children to follow. Thank you. Can anybody down here hear me? Hear what I'm saying? Because I had a terrible time trying to understand what people were saying. And his microphone is facing here. This is a school board that has a tremendous responsibility. Yeah. Here we go. A school board that has a tremendous responsibility. Unpleasant. You worked with John McGee for years. You obviously respect him. Unfortunately, by an accident, some students got a hold of a computer program and identified some of the content of an article that you wrote, John, and they identified it as having been written by somebody else. When I first heard that, I accepted your explanation that it was an accident, that you were pressed for time, that you saw your name on that article, that there wasn't time to change it. And I believe that explanation. It seemed like it was a mistake that anybody could make, and certainly I made my share. But then, what happened was, much to your surprise, I'm sure, and much to my surprise, several more articles were identified, 
And that same pattern was established. You were taking other people's work and passing it off as your own. The word is plagiarism. And you know, and I know, that in academic circles, that is one of the cardinal sins. When that additional plagiarism was identified, what it did was it made that first explanation of yours, in my judgment, an absolute lie. You used that explanation to be so plausible, but on reflection, it was not true. You have been, over a long period of time, I would imagine, doing this and getting by with it. You did not recognize that somebody, some small student in a laboratory, got a hold of a computer program and uncovered the serial plagiarism that you have been responsible for. Now, I feel that listening to the board, that it's going to be a four to one vote to retain you. I think that's a reflection on the thinking of these board members, and I think it's a terrible mistake. I think that you know, and I know, that what you have done is not only wrong, but it would be cause for dismissal, dismissal in virtually every university that I'm aware of. Certainly at Annapolis and at West Point, you would be gone. I'm sorry the board has made the decision it has. It's nothing personal. You made a mistake, and you should be dismissed. And Mel Finley, I know he likes you, he respects you, but he's made that same judgment that you should be dismissed. Thank you. Directly to the board, not to the audience, not directly to Mr. McGee. Your remarks are to us as the board. And I uh, ask the audience to uh, be more respectful. And if you can't be more respectful, I'm going to ask you to leave. Okay? No applause, no cheering, no disrespect. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, my name is. So long. Uh, my name is Steve Damron. Uh, I got a letter from my son. Can't hear you. Uh, my name is Steve Damron. I got a letter from my son who is in Pine uh, Hills right now. Uh, and he has heard about this and he asked me to address his letter and I'd like to read it to him. This is on the matter of Mr. Superintendent, Mr. McGee. I'd like to point out a few things that might aid you in your passing with any sort of judgment. Number one, as a committee, you denied me a right to a public education, regardless of my education in the future. You thought of only yourselves. Number two, given this speech, you justified your decisions based on wanting to face the consequences of my actions. Now I'm in Pine Hills and doing just that. Three, it has come to my attention that Mr. McGee has been caught uh, for plagiarism. The act of stealing, whether it be cigarettes or words of another, is simply wrong. You've shown me, as a 15-year-old, that you couldn't forgive a kid for his actions. So how could you forgive an adult? I have learned that just because a person is in a position of power does not mean he or she is correct in their ways. It also does not mean that he or she should be treated any differently than you are. No matter what the crime is, it is still wrong. And you should go, it should not go unpunished. If an apology from someone who did something that wasn't at the school or didn't affect anyone at the school isn't enough, is it logical to accept an apology from somebody who knew full well what they were doing and the people he was representing? Now I'd like to read what I have. 
Um, Mr. McGee, you told my son that he must accept responsibility for his actions, and he did just that. My son apologized, he went to court, and he was sentenced. My son asked to come back to school and was not allowed to go to school. Okay. Um, they put him into the digital academy. When his grades went to drop, he asked, we asked for help as a family. We weren't given that help. We were told by Mr. McGee, when my son has trouble understanding his work, I make him sit there until he gets it, which is fine. Where was that mobility when you were copying the other's work, claiming it to be your own? When my son came to the school board, and we asked the school board for the same meeting. Sorry about that. Mallory, you told my son that there was a student in the school with sensibility. He said you would be remiss in your duties if you didn't protect those sensibilities. Where's those values protecting those sensibilities for that student now? Vic, even though my son was sentenced by the court, you told my family that the community had a right to punish him for his crime. Where's that right for the community now? Pat, you said in the Zulian article that we need to forgive. Where's that forgiveness when we ask for it? You expect mercy and forgiveness when it's you and your friends are caught doing something wrong, but not for others. I sat here and listened, and as Vicki and, and Dorothy stated, that, that an honest mistake is an honest mistake. While other people make mistakes, you don't have to seem to have the same judgment for them as you do for John. And I would like to read a few words that I wrote down here in conclusion. It says, watch your thoughts, they become words. Watch your words, they become actions. Watch your actions, they become habits. Watch your habits, they become character. And watch your character, becomes your destiny. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, my name is Mark Dillon. I've been here about 20 about 50 years at all these 46 schools. We have reached each place. But first of all, you know what this mention is? Our school is big business. When we had an 8.5 to 9 million budget, our payroll is probably 85 to 90 percent of that, which is taxpayer money. And big business is special. And anyone in big business would be taxed immediately if this happens. And we are busy. We work for friendship for This is business. And boards need to hold their integrity of credibility. And our school as a president doesn't have integrity. The leader of our school has the highest integrity, which is my opinion on this, my opinion, which I tell everybody. And, uh, and what really surprised me, and I don't know if any teachers union members are here, but I was surprised the teachers union didn't come out with a no vote, no confidence for the superintendent. And then I got to thinking a top principal that told me about the good old boy club in our school. And I'm sure probably 75% of the teachers would like to do that. But the good old club is probably held up from doing that. And I would love to talk to the teachers union because I would accuse them of this. Because the good old boy, and I had a talk with John two months after he became superintendent, and I told John, the good old boys are going to try to run the school for me. And I think they've accomplished that. I do, because there hasn't been any other. They all like John very really well because everything is all important to them. But just remember, you've got to look at yourself in the mirror in the morning. And you've got to go this horse with taking 
And make a new on the teaching yourself, first of all. And remember, this is a business, not a friendship for. Thank you. I mean, when I was working on a school, I needed to help cast it. 
I'm actually afraid to say that because I might get my tires flashed. There are people who would not help out because they were afraid of the haters. My friends on the board and behind me, we have more of a problem with this than we We have a problem that adult bullying is acceptable, accepted in this community. And until we deal with that, we are not gonna we are not gonna recruit any any replacement superintendent that's gonna be worthwhile. We're not gonna be able to sell the the houses that are for sale and build good sound business. This is not about Mr. Reed right now. He needs to deal with his consequences. But what you're hearing is is from the haters and um, there are people who have legitimate concerns, as I do, but think about who is leading the charge on this. Thank you.
Um, but what I didn't expect was to be walking down halls and hearing at this and at that in front of teachers and whatnot, and everybody came to live next to it. Our kids, from kindergarten to seniors, all ride the same bus. Our children that are in high school should be held to a higher standard because they are role models for our younger students that are up and coming students. That type of program starts with zero tolerance from kindergarten up. And that's how we teach our kids. And you don't see any notes from anything like that for about six years. Because it takes time for those young kids that learn that program to start role modeling it for their younger ones. And that's what we've always taught our kids, that myself and my husband, we are our role models for our children. So if we do something, how are we to tell our children that they are not allowed to do it? Um, the first board meeting I went to, I won't name the staff member, but I was told that it was because of outsiders like me why we have a problem here in Florida. That was in May of 2009, and it was over the court of the um, situation. And I tried to talk to some other parents, and at the time I was told, don't even bother with getting involved, because this will be targeted, and they will be ostracized, and they will pay the price for it. And you know what? After talking to lots of parents, I believe them. So I stepped out and figured, you know what? I think the great kids, they don't have any problems. But their problem is that they have to put up with the other kids. That they have to. Um, the reason why I'm going through all this analogy is, is that as administrators and parents, we are role models for our children on um, what is acceptable and what is not. And when we do make a mistake, what the consequences are. Um, to date, our children have seen Mr. McGee come into the classroom and cry in front of them, and which originally um, our son went into class thinking he was going to have you know questions for McGee and ask him you know how it happened, what you know how did the situation occur, to somehow try to little, you know find out how the mistake occurred. And as soon as he you know, so I was speaking with Mr. Moody and start crying and he felt guilty. And myself shouldn't have to feel guilty for wanting to ask questions in regards to accountability. And when it comes down to accountability, one article is one thing, but the first article that came out, that was supposed to make us as a community feel more secure and feel safer after the shootings in Connecticut. That was the first article that was found and it was it was plagiarized verbatim word for work. And you have a student that's here at the school. And you couldn't find heartfelt words that would tell us as a community that, you know, we're looking into this and we're doing that to make us feel better. That's what, that's what hurt me. The plagiarism now that was bad, but it was the article that was bad, you know. That that particular article was not heartfelt and didn't come from you being a parent. To the students here at Florence. So, I mean, that really, I mean, it's felt like a kick in the gut, I have to tell you. And that also bothered the kids because our kids, the last two days before Christmas break, didn't want to go to school because they didn't feel safe. I mean, we here in Ravalli County do not even have our own SWAT team. If something occurs at the school, heaven only knows how long it would take for somebody to get here. And we we'll usually only have two sheriffs on duty at any given time. So if anything happened in, at our school, heaven forbid, there would be major consequences. So that was supposed to make us feel safer. But that was the first article, you know. And you knew and were saying in the South and saying that you felt like there were people in the community that had an act of right against you. And, you know, once an article like this was found, what did you think that they were going to do? I mean, of course, they're going to start digging and seeing if you did it once. I mean, if somebody's going to do it once, I mean, who knows? Maybe they've done it twice, two, three times. And that's the snowball that happens. And lo and behold, we find out that the first time they played drive was back in 2010. And that was the article called Clean Friends by John C. B. It was taken from Office Dynamics to Admit and it's an administrator's website. So I don't know if there's... Uh-huh. 
I'm sorry, we've already, um, we've already said that we are not going to discuss every oh, okay. argument. So well, okay. we're, we're going we're to concede that there was plagiarism. Um, we're not going to discuss every item that anybody's found. Okay, but maybe not everybody here knows what article I'm sorry, we're still not going to discuss it. It's on the agenda. We are, we have okay. conceded that there is plagiarism. Okay. We're not going to discuss it. So here's the difference. The difference between plagiarism and copyright infringement is this. Plagiarism is handled by administration at school. Copyright infringement is handled by the court. The article that we be included in the November of 2012 was taken from tiphealth.org website. And on the very first screen when you enter it, it says, terms and policy of use. It goes on to say that in, there are very specific guidelines that you have to follow in order to reuse their artwork in print or online. Our thousand view is distributed to over 2,500 households. So not only do we have an article that was copyrighted um, by me, it was run out to 2,500 different households. And it was posted online, which puts those two things right there according to the United States Copyright and Infringement Law, not only present to be a big financial risk for me to, um, it puts a school at risk because that's our new club. And it can go all the way down to Mr. Gardner, the one that handles our technology, because he's responsible for posting things online. And that is a crime, and it is an offense. And you can't say he didn't know because it's very, very clear on the website that you can't let that the five different criteria for reprinting the article on what you have to do. You can't edit the article, you can't post the article without hiding your website. Um, I'd be happy to tell you all the different things that are on here. And not only do you edit the article on the question of being, but you posted it online and in the document view, which it speaks vehemently that you're not allowed to publicate any of their articles without citing them, and if you only do a partial publication, you have to cite where the rest of the article can be found. And that, you know, aside from everything else, is a big deal. Because that puts our school district at financial risk. Not just now, but in the future. Because these people, they may not know how, or they may know, but who's going to, you know, they may come to you first, but then they're going to see who touched that article and who included that article in the document view and how it was done out. So that, the 2500 newsletter that went out, went out to 3400 voters in our community. So, you know, aside from being the curtain, and don't get me wrong with me, I know you've got a lot of great things for our school, but sometimes, like we tell our kids, you know, you are, sometimes your mistakes um, are lifelong. You know, they're not fixable. Sometimes the consequences, just as if you brought a car, you're going to prison. It's not the same as if you steal a piece of gum from a grocery store. There are some things, some actions in life that have hard consequences. And unfortunately, with these five different acts of plagiarism, it's been over and over. And it's been between 2010 and 2012. So if you didn't come for the first time that they drive, they saw a man up like somebody else mentioned. There were many other articles and more, I mean, I can tell you right now if you wanted to you how many different people or websites have their material stolen from and it's their material. And we pay you a lot of money to be able to write your article for us. We put our trust in you to protect our kids and to give, bring them the best class as possible beside the other. And what this did for me was if you're going to do this, what else have you done? That's what really took back what I know my kids. You lose my trust and it's all gone. Like you have to start over from zero. So now I don't believe anything you say. And that's how we bring up our kids. And so I'm not, I don't want to negate anything that you've ever done that's called like our school. I don't want you to think that. But this, these particular issues are monstrous. So, 
I thank you for what you've done for our school, but unfortunately, to me, it's overrided. And, I, you know, that was a really hard thing for me to have to explain to my kids, especially in the safety article. I mean, that is, wow, above and beyond that. Was, that hurt me, and it hurt my kids. So, um, that's all I have to say. And, you know, the National High School Federation, um, one of them, they were one of the people that were playing drive from, and we're members of their, their group, the National Federation for the High School Association. And she launched in one little article. And so we're members of those groups. What are they going to think about? You know, this is part of the way you really have to be. So that's, that's it. I guess that's all I'd like for you guys to consider. Thank you, um, Before you start, I would like to ask how many more people are planning to see? Thank you. Right. Thank you. You're going to have to hold that right into your mouth. I'm Rob Morgan, and uh, I want to thank the uh, board and the administration and the teachers for uh, coming in there and trying to keep this thing running with all the uh, outside pressure. Um, I got an opportunity here uh, last fall to work with John. Five weeks I filled in for supervisor of maintenance. Um, I was impressed with the list that Vicky came up with. Um, I felt the same way. So I believe John's done an outstanding job at the school. Um, I was so really impressed. Uh, it's all maintenance here. Um, he's on the leading edge of everything. Um, I, and today I've seen a lot of agendas up here, uh, different agendas. Um, I'm not so sure. That they're all for teams, um, but uh, um, I, I really thought the position was already solved, and now I see that when we're back in, um, I, I really wish that this community could be passed and uh, uh, resolved and let this board do what it's supposed to do. Uh, at the end of the day, um, this is about kids, and get them educated, and um, Get them ready to take on the teacher. Um, I just, I hate to see this task over again. Uh, I think John did a great job. Made some mistakes, but I think it's time for this community to start healing and to move forward. Um, and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, we just got to keep these kids educated. That's it. Let's talk. 
I think the fact that the superintendent didn't come fully clear and disclose all the problems that occurred is a problem. It's an attempt to be a problem. I feel for you guys because you thought this matter was behind you and it extended its contract. And then I feel for the board because they, at least what I understand, is that you thought this matter was solved with the floor occurrence. I'm going to just insert one thing here. Um, anybody who knows how the school runs knows that anyone who's hired here is hired during a public meeting. And so people, those of you who are following the minutes of the meeting in the minute manner that lots of people do, should be able to discern that Mr. Redeem has not been offered a contract of any kind at this point. So I want to put the stop to that falsehood that is being perpetuated in the media and in the community that he's been given a contract renewal. That is not the case. So I want that to stop now. Okay. I'm sorry, no. Well, Mr. Lyle still has the floor. Well, the lady, so let me say, first off, I deeply apologize. I don't follow the minutes as closely as I guess I should. It was not where I went. I wasn't trying to propagate a falsehood or anything else. You're just giving me a chance to say that what needed to be said. Okay, well, thank, thank you. I'm um, a little off track. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> a little nervous here. Uh, but again, it's about honesty. And if that's the case, then great, that's a great opportunity for you to address this. It's a sad fact that at least I've given the impression that this was a, a resolved issue with a one and done type of thing. And it's been rocked, but it's more. I think it's a sad fact that our students are laughing, joking amongst each other about this. That's a terrible fact. I think it's a sad fact that we have to be on TV in the TV chair. I think it's a sad fact that other districts are looking at this. It's a terrible thing. And for me, it all comes down to one thing. Honesty and disclosure. And I have, a, like others here, I have a serious lack of distrust when someone is not fully transparent and forthcoming when they've made a mistake. It's like, I got my hands in the cookie jar and I caught one. But I'm not going to say about all those other things that I've done. I have a problem with that. I hope you do too. Um, because like many others here, I think the superintendent's done a good job. The deeds don't override honesty and integrity. And I hope you weigh that in this difficult decision that's before you. And then I hope, whatever you do, that you lay out a complete plan of disclosure and transparency to help bring this community together because we are sadly fractured. I don't have an agenda. I'm not part of any agenda. I was afraid to speak because I thought it would be aligned with an agenda. <laughs> I think there's many people who are like that. And I, don't, I, don't, I don't want that in our community. This is about kids. This is about kids and coming together. And I think you as a board need to help us find that um, community again. Because I'm proud to live in Florence, I'm proud to have my kids in Florence. And I want to continue to feel proud. Right now, I'm not so proud with um, the administration. This lack of honor, uh, honesty and integrity really has affected me. Thank you, that's all I can say. I've watched you come to things 
well. I've seen you push things aside. I've seen you hold kids' feet to the fire over a small compression. You're real tough on kids when it comes down to it. You always have to set an example for the kids. I've watched you do it. I've heard you say the word. And now I'm hearing you say, the exact opposite when it comes to punishing or disciplining an adult. Somebody says, yes, he does find that off. I don't know very well. I've been following him in numerous projects. Um, I'm very surprised at what's happened to John and I, our friends, and what we may have done. I'm very disappointed in what he's done. Uh, I, I think the example that he has set is <laughs> unfortunate. It's something that this, this is an offense in academic circles is that only physically or sexually abusing child. This is a huge thing. If a kid does this in college, they're kicked out of eating. If a kid does this in high school, they're kicked out of class, they fail the class. There are consequences. There are um, you have to be held accountable for what you do in my job. And I don't know why schools are any different than anyone else. When I cross the line, when I do something wrong, and I have to make money in face, and everybody in this room has made mistakes. That's not, that's not the point. The point is, <clears throat> you know when you cross the line, and he's done it numerous times. It's not the first time, it's probably not going to be the last time. He just happened to be caught, and it, the example that I read him was for a basic. The other guy at Harvard, they were, I mean, every word was exact. And he put his name on it. And then he blamed it on the secretary. I heard him, I heard him blame the secretary for probably the five things that should have been done, didn't get done, and just, it, it, it ended up being the secretary's fault. I don't believe that anymore. And I have an advantage over the other people because I've been around him a lot, and I do. I've been around the board a lot. Uh, I'm not very. I really don't uh, envy your experience because if you don't play the right one, you're going to get blamed. And either way you go, know, it's going to be wrong or something. But the important I'm trying to make is if I make a mistake, if I step across that line in my line of work or in any line of work, I know I'm done. I know I'm done. And I know if a kid had done this, and he was standing before you right now, your policy would be to hold his feet to the fire, and that's exactly what we do. When the kid does it, you, you don't even have to make a class. So, I think it's kind of when you stood up and made an example. I've heard that comment from almost everybody in this, at that table. It's time to make an example. Well, it is time to make things up. And it's time for somebody to stand up and show some integrity and honor. I'm sorry for what happened, I don't like it. Nobody can like it. Nobody wants to be with that. But it's time somebody did it. When you make a mistake, you should be held accountable. And the kids need to learn that. And what better time to do that? Or what better time to show that than that? Thank you. Um, Captain, just to address your comment that you made about the rumors about making in this contract, I want to let you know that in the case, in the new I'm sorry, um, you already had a chance to come up and speak. Um, right? Yes. And so, I was supposed to for it, I believe. No, no, no. Well, I know that you said that it was a rumor. I called the district on February 8th at 2.42 p.m. Uh, and I was told by Jeannie Morgan. She apologized to me because she did not have McGee's current contract that was voted and he, his contract was renewed on January 23rd. I'm asking you how... misunderstood question. This was difficult to the handwriting, the middle, Right, but I had asked, I, 
you have all mentioned to me, you've seen it me several times, that the board has forwarded, I don't want to sign an affidavit, okay? I have the phone, I have the phone call and everything done. I, I was told that on the 23rd meeting that his contract was renewed, you apologize, and you even used the verb to this, you apologize for your contract okay. because the board has followed it to you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How does that I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay, okay, all right. Ms. Morgan gave you incorrect information. Okay. She knows now that she gave you incorrect information. So we are going to, we are not going to continue that the that the contract has been reduced. It has not been reduced. Okay. She gave you incorrect information for not completely understanding what your question is. Her question was at that time. I didn't know so that. I didn't know that. Now, now, and everybody, everybody knows that if you need information from the district office, you need to submit your questions in writing so that everyone can be sure that we understand what your question is and that no one can call up and just blindside somebody who ever answers the phone. We need to know exactly what your question is. I asked so them to do that. And they you are going to, we are not going to talk about that. I'm thank, thank you for letting us know that you were the one who called. Right. Thank you very much. Well, I didn't have anything to hide, so I didn't. No, that's why I have to let somebody know. That's fine. I know I, I, we're not going to talk about it. It was incorrect information that you were given, and we were sorry that that happened. Okay. Hi. I'm Kelly Michael Director, and I don't have a lot to say. I just would like to say that I agree with the young girl that came up and spoke. Um, I probably think that she spoke for a lot of students. I agree with the young man and everything he has to say. Alan Lyle, it is about the students. It's about leadership. Um, I'm very disappointed in him be one time, okay, more than one time, not okay. I can tell by the list on this corner, with the road, the rewriting stations, that you've already made a decision, and that saddens me. Um, I've been here for 50 years, my dad graduated from here, we've had people in this school, Lauren Falcon. I'm a fan, you can't tell I'm a fan, look at my car, Lauren Falcon, stuff, stuff all over. Um, I believe in this school. I don't believe in this community anymore. I don't trust him. And that's all. Thank you. Okay, so um, we are going to call for questions on Mr. Philly's uh, motion. And uh, Mr. Philly, would you? Give your motion once again so everybody knows what we're going on. The motion I made was to initiate a termination of John Barron in regards to our superintendent John Keating. So our motion has been seconded. Uh, we've had a discussion, a call for the question. So all in favor of Mill's no, motion, please signify with aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion uh, that we, we develop a letter of reprimand to Mr. McGee, which includes the disciplinary action we've already talked about. In addition, excuse me, I've got a motion in place, and it's very disturbing. And uh, that, that people are walking in disrespectful, people are walking out. Uh, including in this letter of reprimand will be a uh, suspension uh, to be further um, clarified. So that's my motion. Did you get that, Jim? 
The motion is to develop a letter of recommend to be permanently placed in Mr. McGee's file that includes the already mentioned disciplinary action in addition, uh, the VA suspension to be uh, further determined. Thank you. I, I'm sorry, but can you reiterate the suspension element of the motion? I'm still not aware of it. All right, we, uh, we need, first of all, I just wanted to second in the motion. Um, the motion is to develop a letter of reprimand. And so here in the discussion portion, we're going to talk about what the, um, what the uh, terms of that reprimand are going to be. So um, we have the motion and we have a second, so we will now proceed to discussion. Um, how about you, Mr. Zegger, please start. Okay, in this letter of recommend, uh, there will be, um, you know, the items that we've already talked about, but the suspension that I would like the board to uh, consider is a uh, two weeks or ten working day suspension. Um, without pay. Um, and, and we'll, we'll include the exact dates of when the suspension will start and stop. Um, in addition, there will be a, a further warning that any uh, further demonstration of deficient performance in the writing uh, may result in additional dis discipline or discharge. Anything else uh, to discuss tonight? Mr. Chairman, do you have anything that you'd like to discuss for that kind of fashion? No, all right. Okay. Um, hold on a sec. Uh, Mrs. Marsh? I think that, um, can you hear me? Too many of us are turned off. Now, can you hear me? Um, I think that the two weeks um, administratively um, unpaid is, um, should be the final um, part of the discipline action for this particular event. I, I like the way that you have that if it happens again, that it will be, um, in my mind, if it happens again, it will be grounds for termination. Um, I don't suspect that that's going to be the case, but I'm, I'm glad that that's in writing. Um, and the date, Mike, did you have what date is when we're looking out for that? May I ask a question? Will that be the other day? Hold on, I'm going to say we will get to the date of the the total date for the unpaid suspension would be March 25th uh, through uh, April 5th. Again, that would be for an unpaid suspension. No. That's during the public break. Spring break? Which, uh, Administrators don't get spring break, they work through spring break. That's judged to the office people. Are you going to allow discussion from the Okay, so we are uh, we are in discussion and uh, we have to follow the rules. We have to join the discussion. I'm going to let it go into two minutes per person. The only addition that I would make is to consider. In our family, we like to see that when an error is made, that there is uh, progress that uh, there are recommendations to help a person grow in the area that they falter in. And so I would make a recommendation that instead of um, Mr. McGee's voluntary inclusion in the Falcon View, that he be required by this board to write every month an article to be published in the Falcon View, and that that article 
and Mr. McGee's inclusion of that material be reviewed by one of our fine English teachers here at the school. I think it's important if you're going to discipline, and I agree with the discipline. I, I think a two-week suspension without pay is probably a good idea. But I think you need also to add an element that says, this is what we're going to do to try to help Mr. McGee further. That's what we do to people we care about. The weight of this thing has got to be huge on Mr. McGee, and, and it should be. But I think we also need to make, make the next step to help him become a better person, a better administrator, and to move forward in his life as a leader for our school. All right, thank you for that suggestion. And that's what we're doing right now is talking about the, uh, the specifics of a letter that will be drafted uh, and uh, signed off by the appropriate people and placed in the CD employment file. So that's what we're talking about right now, our suggestions for this particular recommended letter. Uh, can you come back and go and talk to the microphone? So I just have a couple questions. I, I guess I just have a couple questions. Um, does the suspension, someone with a suspension record, does that uh, qualify for renewal contract? Or is that a, does that stand in the way for a renewal contract? It would be something to be considered. I can't say definitively at this moment. It would be something to be considered. I, I would just encourage you to not let this become a referendum on the board. This issue. I, I think. You need to hold the mic. So, try. I, I would encourage you not to let this action or inaction, what level of you take, um, become a referendum on the board performance, um, whitewashing or what some people would say whitewashing or endorsing um, or um, abstaining or overlooking integrity and honesty issues. I don't know what the right answer is, but it's a fine line. And it would be very easy, one way or the other, to have a referendum on the board. And I, just, and I really wouldn't want that to happen. So I would just encourage you to look this way, because I think that the failure of the highest level, and I don't see how we can continue with such a lack of integrity or honesty in that position and everything else. I don't know what you do with that. That's, that's my personal opinion, and I bet it's the opinion of a lot of people here as well. Thank you. My name is DJ Ballester, and um, I'm very excited. BJ Yeah. Okay, thanks. I'm very disappointed with what your decision was made tonight because as parents, we have a duty to our kids to raise them in our belief system and moral high standards. He's in a place of leadership and he did some great things, but he didn't do those things on the wall. We have some awesome teachers who do those great things. He's just a leader. He's an example for our kids. Now I have to go home and explain to my kids why a leader can do something like that repeatedly and it's okay. But when I have to discipline my kids at home and there's consequences, how do we explain that? I went to this school nine years ago because I want to get my kids in a school system that was trustworthy, away from the big city, that kind of thing. And I'm just thinking that morally we have just set an example that has diminished. And not only kids go back to school, you don't have a, a standing, I don't believe, because they feel like, oh, I can get my hands up and I can go do it again. He's repeated this offense several times. And my question is, after these two weeks, if an old situation comes up that surfaces, 
is that going to change the game? Does that mean he's out of here? Or is it because it was an old one? It's okay. Thank you. Uh, the only thing that I would recommend with this decision is that, and this has been my criticism of the board, and I've talked to many of you, and talked to all of you now. I think your biggest criticism is that you're not very good communicators. As you can hear in this information age, we've got really communicators out here. Look at the Falcon Review, look at you know, all of the things. Uh, when I heard from the last person that there weren't consequences, there weren't consequences that she could agree to, right? But I think it's really important for our community to know that there are consequences to this, and that it be very clear to the community, and that it not just be in the newspaper. I think you guys need to really look at how you communicate and you, Mr. McGee, as the leader of the school, of how you communicate and not be as dependent as you are on the Falcon view. I just think that uh, there will be misinformation. You've already heard it. People don't agree, so they consider it non consequential, right? We're not all going to agree on that. But get your information out there so people understand what your decision was. Thank you. Sure. Is it going to be in this file that he stated he is his after he found out? Is that going to be in this file? Not that he came forward, but after he found out, he admitted he did. Is that going to be in the file? We, um, we need to discuss, we'll need to discuss the content of the letter and the final letter will then become part of the public record. Uh, I can't say point, but uh, what we're expecting is going to be there. Uh, but this is your chance to make suggestions. So. Thank you. Thank you. And may I ask one more question? Sure. How does this contract come up for review or to renew? His contract expires at the end of this school year. They rant, they rave, they 
they get their seal and they walk out just as they walked out to me. These kids deserve more and they should stay here in the regular board meeting and listen. When the principal gives the report, the superintendent gives the report, the AD gives the report of all the things that are going on in school that are good. We are not perfect. There is no school district that is perfect. When I turned on the board, our superintendent left. We spent two years searching for a new superintendent. The first round of candidates were simply unacceptable. I will never forget that experience in my life. I was shocked at who came and applied at the first round. The second year, we went through it again. And I have to tell you, I feel like we just, at that point, we needed someone so desperately, we just took who we got on the best what we had. That said, having lost that experience, I cannot believe, first of all, I don't believe the school is used and with what this community has gone through in the last four or five years and the turmoil and the anger and the sign, tonight people left, I heard them make physical threats. When that first group of people left, there was a gentleman, he said to me, that made a physical threat against someone else. That bothered me ten times worse than what was really needed. That is fact. <laughs> and I don't know if I'm still out there, but I'm sitting there and I'm walking and I'm all over nervous. I'm thinking, my gosh, what is going to happen now? Are we going to have a fist fight out in our parking lot? I, I just, I cannot believe it. We need to be rational. Nobody is saying that there's going to be consequences. There are going to be consequences. They might not be your consequences. I, I'm sure all of this is a huge consequence. There's no doubt. Termination is a consequence. Lots of times people make big mistakes, read the paper, administrative fees. In your mind, you might have felt that they need to be terminated. You might have felt something completely different. But honestly, as a community, we've got to get together. Does it mention a community because of this or something else? I am not convinced that Brad is going to be doing that as far as what somebody that leaves our school and does and is a positive change to the school. So, something I know from the board, I hear in a tough situation. Thank you. My name is Kevin Berry. I would like to thank, say thank you to Melvin Benny for his character and integrity. Uh, I don't think this, if this was a suit in this position. I don't think the rest of the board would treat Mr. McKee as they would treat a suit. It's not fair. Thank you, Mel. Okay, does anyone else have anything about the motion that's on the table of developing this letter of recommend? I need, I need, I'm sorry, I need to come back for people from here. So I would just say one more thing that I understand what you're saying. I don't agree with you either, but this is, I understand what you're saying, I don't agree with you either. But, that's not what we're talking about in here. And I don't believe, and I sat over there and talked about this before, and I just want to say that I do not believe a suspension will allow Mr. McGee to buy his office back. And that's what I see it happening. He's paying a fee, and now we're going to forgive him and he will be honest and forthright going forward. I don't see that. I have a real problem with that. I don't have an agenda. I just want someone in this position that we can all stand up, get behind as a community, and move forward with. 
I think that this is attached to him. This plagiarism, he will never live it down. It will go with him. And I wish him well wherever he goes, but I wish he could go somewhere else. Thank you. All right, I'm going to call the question on the motion. All those in favor of the motion of this letter of reprimand that we um, are going to develop, and that, by the way, will be written by myself. Um, and as I say, the proper signatures will be, uh, the board will review it, and the proper signatures will be obtained, uh, and it will become a matter of public record at, a, at the April meeting. So anyone who would like to request a copy of that will be able to do so at that time. Uh, but we are going to vote on the uh, on the uh, gist of the letter of recommend right now, and then we are going to be at the end of this agenda item. So we are voting for the letter of recommend. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Opposed. All right, so the motion for the letter of reprimand has passed. And we are going to go on to the next item of business, which is to hire a wrestling coach. Okay. Uh, at this time, I'd like to introduce Jamie Deere. Uh, getting to your site, we got a basic piece in our head wrestling ball position. We had two applicants that applied for the position, neither of these ball. Uh, Jamie comes to us with really solid credentials in terms of experience as a wrestler, uh, in coaching as a wrestler, uh, he assisted at the collegiate level as a wrestling coach. And so we got the with the strong recommendation to improve the board to hire a team and take on the wrestling board. Okay. 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 okay, so Mrs. Quartz has moved and this is Rose and seconded to hire Jamie Muir as the new wrestling coach. Uh, so, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Welcome. Thank you for being willing to take the call. We look forward to a great next season. Okay, so on the old business. Uh, this is a final round of discussion requested by our other council to have this on the agenda. Uh, we have a few of them Okay, so we're going to table the discussion of the Title IX with our attorney, um, and we will take that up at a later date. So that leaves us adjourned. Um, I'm going to say one more thing, though. Uh, I appreciate everybody coming. I appreciate everybody's participation. I appreciate everybody's opinion. Um, but I would like for people to take away from this that we can agree to disagree. And we can, um, it, we teach our children and we're trying to teach our children every day at school that it's not okay to bully. And um, we are seeing members in our community who have the right to their opinion but they do not have a right to bully or try to bully other people or intimidate other people to their opinion. If they can't agree to disagree, then I don't know how they can get along in life. That's just my personal opinion. But um, we need to have some healing. We need to have some civility. And I would appreciate if everyone who would take that message home to their family and their neighbors and other members of the community. Um, we can't, we can't, we won't solve everybody's question. We won't get to everybody's uh, idea of what the right thing is. But we need to have some healing as a community, and the bullying 
by the adults of other adults needs to stop. Um, that day, so we know when to come back for it, or it will come up. It will come up again. Um, it will be on another board agenda, um, and we can't set, set a date without knowing what her calendar is. So it will be it will be an agenda item. Uh, but whether it becomes a special meeting or whether it's on the April meeting, we'll have to find out from her when she can come to us. I just kind of like to say one more thing too. Um, I know not all the board meetings are this interesting, um, but I wish there was. I wish we got to the point where we had to have the board meeting in this old gym all the time, because I, I really think it's uh, very beneficial to have a lot of the uh, audience and public um, involved in the meetings. And, and as was already stated, stay for the whole meeting and, and hear the positive news that are in all the reports. Can you come up and talk at the microphone? Now, I just read more of the comment that the bullying needs to stop. So does the play group. Thank you. We are adjourned.